Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to the Quick Take, and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel as we enter the final week of the transfer window for the 2023 2024 season. Things are starting to heat up, especially in the attacking department at Chelsea. But before I get into the news, I'm running a giveaway with ownersaber.com. We're at 15,000 subscribers. I'm giving away three King of London lightsabers. All you need to do is to subscribe to the channel and check the pinned comment down below to enter. All right, on with the video. So, starting off with today's news stories Romelu Lukaku to Roma. Now, a few days ago, there was a little bit of a scare. We were a little bit worried that Pochino might want to keep Lukaku, but that seems to have quelled itself nicely. And it looks like the Belgian striker is on his way to Roma. Apparently, I think it was the owner of Roma who met with Chelsea yesterday, and they're also meeting today to iron out the final details of the move. Uh, according to, I think, Matt Law, it's going to be just a straight loan with an eight to nine million pound fee. Uh, on top of that, Roma will cover all of his wages. Uh, with Lukaku expected to take a wage cut down to seven million per year. Poor him. Uh, nearly ten million less than what he was currently making at Chelsea on three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds a week. So substantial. Um, I'm quite surprised he took it. But if no, if no other club wanted him, he was outright refusing to go to Saudi Arabia and Roma, of course our European club, back in Italy where he feels comfortable. I could see why it would be happening now. But this does also mean, in my eyes, this is the final nail in the coffin for Dusan Vlahovic to Chelsea. Um, although, uh, as we enter the final weeks of the transfer windows, anything could happen. I really do think that that move is now off of the table. But Chelsea are looking to add reinforcements to the attack. Uh, with obviously Christopher Nkunku uh, now out for a considerable amount of time and uh, players like Mohamed Kudos is now signed for West Ham even though Chelsea did come in late towards his move to West Ham he had already had his eye he'd already had his heart settled and he was ready to move to the London club uh, but moving on to more important news than uh, West Ham player Mark Kukreya is set to join Manchester United on loan. Very interesting move. Um, Mark Kukreya never really hit the ground running last season. Um, we paid quite a lot of money for him. Underperformed when he did play. I think he had one good game. I think it was against Borussia Dortmund uh, in the second leg, if I remember correctly, when Pochettino had just come off that horrendous... Uh, when uh, Graham Potter, sorry, had just come off that horrendous losing streak. Um, he did play quite well. I'm pretty sure he got man of the match, actually. But other than that, he's been pretty woeful for us. And Luke Shaw has been ruled out with an injury. And so Manchester United have been in the market for left-backs. I've heard the name Marcus Alonso mentioned. Um, but it does look like Mark Kukurea is, is the preferred option. Just, just a straight loan. Um, they'll probably cover majority of the wages, if I had to guess. Um, final details could be sorted out today. He's another player who's on a good amount of money. So getting, getting him along with... Romelu Lukaku off the wage bill, not a bad idea. The only problem I have with this deal is it leaves us with just two left backs now. Obviously, Ben Chilwell, who has had his fair share of injuries, and Ian Matson, who he's performed well, but he, during preseason, he was more of an attacking player, literally playing with the four people up front in a 4-2-3-1. Very strange to then slot him into left back where he can play left back, but it's not his, str his strength. When he was at Burnley, he was very much an attacking left back. Um, his defensive stats weren't all that, but his attacking stats, second to none. Um, so I can quite easily see Chilwell getting injured. And then that leaves us with just Ian Matson and potentially Levy Cobble to fill in that left back position if Matson wants to play hard at the field and potentially a three at the back system with Colwell, Thiago Silva, Ben Wabadia, Shile, something along those lines um, with uh, Reese James on the right if when he comes back in the next few weeks or Malo Gusto and then Ben Chiwell playing as a left winger because. It's not like we have any other left wingers at the club. Mudrick. Um, moving on. Moving. As I said earlier, Chelsea are in the market for more versatile attackers. Um, a couple of names mentioned so far are, of course, Bradley Barcola, Ryan Cherky, Emil Smith Rowe, Jaden Sancho, um, potentially Darwin Nunes. I'll get into that in just a minute. Along with Rafinha and Ferran Torres of Barcelona. Um, as I said, we lost out on Kudos. We lost out on Xavi Simons to, or Xavi Simons, sorry, to RB Leipzig. 
and Gabri Vega has has gone to Saudi Arabia at what 21, 22 years old. So goodbye having a strong legacy. Um, but that leaves us with my top two options in my Mason Matt replacement video. My top two options were. Ryan Cherky and Florian Verse. Now, Ryan Cherky, I've liked him for quite a while. I think he's a lot like, um, uh, he's, a quite, he's quite a lot like Eden Hazard in a sense where he's not the best trainer. He doesn't exactly throw himself into training. He doesn't do a thousand miles in five minutes when he's running around, you know, the training field, or whatever. But when he plays, he is one of the best players on the pitch. On the eyes, he's beautiful to watch. He understands balance so well. He's very quick-footed. Uh, he's got quite a stocky build. He's a lot like Eden Hazard. Uh, very young. He started playing for Leon when he was very young. I think he was 16 when he made his debut. He's been in the side ever since. He's now 19 years old, I think, with a beard, the... Very impressive beard, which makes me feel really annoyed. Um, uh, but brilliant player. Apparently, Leon don't want to sell this late into the window, but I believe if a 50 million or a 55 million or even a 60 million, where it's 50 million, 50 million plus 2 million add-ons, there could be something to be done with that deal. Uh, Bradley Barcola, again, another player who actually I think he also plays for Leon alongside... Um, I could be getting this wrong. I could be getting it messed up. But he plays alongside Lacazette. They've had quite a good link-up play. It's almost similar to Jadon Sancho and Haaland. Nowhere near as prolific. But similar, they, similarly, they understand each other's rhythms, each other's runs. And um, they understand each other's timing. So they've got a nice partnership going on over there. Uh, but the reason I mentioned Darwin Nunes is because, as some of you may know, Alex Goldberg is quite a large figure on Twitter. I think he's got over half a million followers. And he does have some connections inside the club. He, uh, he speaks to players um, fairly often, as far as I'm aware, and one of the players he did mention or did allude to the other day was Darwin Nunes. Now, Darwin Nunes is actually a brilliant player. I actually think he'd fit in quite well into Pochettino's side. He's very versatile. He's, he's what Pochettino wants, a versatile attacker. He can play on the left. He can play down the middle. He doesn't really play on the right, but he can do it if he's forced to. Um, he did score two goals off the bench coming against Newcastle. In the, I don't want to call it historic, but a historic comeback at St. James's Park. Liverpool down to 10 men, 1 0 down, bring on Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes takes the ball and just scores two brilliant goals, just bursting past defenders, holding them off, and really, really smart finishes into the bottom corner across the face of goal. Brilliant stuff from Darwin Nunes. Um, and I think he's been underrated for quite a while now. He hasn't, as I said, he hasn't hit the ground running at Liverpool. He did score two goals, as I said, against uh, Newcastle, but. He hasn't set the world alight on the same level that someone like Erling Haaland does. But I guess a lot of strikers, when you compare them to Erling Haaland, they do look a lot worse. Um, so I do think he's been somewhat of a victim to Haaland's um, brilliance. Uh, to put it lightly, I think a deal would be hard to do. Um, as I said, this late into the window, it's going to be hard to pry any player away from Liverpool who do have... Actually, no, they don't have... I was about to say they have Champions League football. They don't have Champions League football. Interesting. But they will want to push for the league. Uh, they brought in Dominic Schroeder-Schleyer. They missed out on Enzo Fernandez. They missed out on Moises Caicedo. They missed out on Romelu Lavia. They missed out on Jude Bellingham. They haven't exactly had the best times this winter. They've ended up bringing in Endo. As I think a deal would be kind of hard to deal. Uh, Saudi Arabia pushing hard for... Mohamed Salah, last thing I saw, they were offering 100 million fixed plus 50 million on add-ons, and Salah would be getting paid quite handsomely along the same uh, kind of lines as Neymar and Cristiano Ronaldo are getting paid in Saudi Arabia. So, big money, big, big money. But one to keep an eye on Darwin Nunes as we head into the final week of the transfer window. As I said earlier, Chelsea have been linked to a quite a few names. Emil Smith-Rowe, Ferran Torres, Rafinha, uh, Brennan Johnson. Thankfully, the Brennan Johnson links have died down with, it looks like, I think it's Cho heading over to Nottingham Forest for £8 million, along with Andre Santos has already signed and is there on loan. Um, but thankfully, uh, the Brennan Johnson links have died down. Uh, I was getting a little bit worried. I don't really rate him at all. But thankfully, the gods have shone down a brilliant light. But one thing I would like to mention is... Fabri uh, Fabrizio Romano did mention that Chelsea, after what happened with the Michael Elise deal, how well it was publicised. Uh, it was publicised in the media. Sorry, and how much how much uh, media attention it got. It alerted Crystal Palace to what Chelsea were up to, and Bish Bash Bosh, he signed a new deal, and he's going to be staying at Crystal Palace. This annoyed Chelsea quite a lot, as you can imagine. Um, so 
this final week of the transfer window expect quite a lot of noise but maybe noise not to listen to because Chelsea are now working in secret uh, basically when trying to get in these attacking players so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up uh, bringing in a player that hasn't been mentioned before um, I know Gon, uh, is it Pedro Con Gonchalves or I probably butchered that pronunciation Pedro Gonchalves of Sporting Lisbon is one of the players that a lot of Chelsea fans want to bring in um, he's a good player 25 26 years old I think so he wouldn't be one of the young players he'd be brought in as more more of an experienced head while still having that youth around him uh, kind of mid-20s that's a good that's a good age to bring in a player he would get goals he would get assists he would be a good player for us he scored I think he I think he's the one that scored the the halfway goal against Arsenal in the uh, it was at the Europa League. That was quite an interesting game, actually. I, I would actually go watch that back. That was quite an interesting game. God, he played well, but he went out to PSG, so it doesn't really matter. But as I said, don't be surprised if we sign a player that hasn't been mentioned yet. Uh, as far as as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any concrete links between Chelsea and the likes of Ryan Cherky and Jadon Sancho. As I said, Chelsea work in silence. Um, Jadon Sancho would be an interesting one. I'm pretty sure Joe Shields is the one that brought him into Man City when he was a kid. Uh, or scouted him and brought him into Man City. And of course, he went to British Dortmund, lit the world on fire. Manchester United were after him for two years. He went to United and he hasn't really done much or performed to level as to what was expected of him. And he was a Chelsea fan growing up. He, uh, I think he said just before he signed for Manchester United, he accepted, you know, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was a Chelsea fan growing up. You know, Frank Lampard, the way he uh, played with the ball in the midfield, just brilliant. Um, fantastic stuff. I would take Jenna Sancho um, if it was less than, say, 50 million. Um, he's versatile. I'm pretty sure he's been played as a nine in preseason by Ten Hag. I saw someone saying that. He can play on the left and the right-hand side. Again, versatile. Chelsea fan growing up. Hasn't really uh, had the best of experience at Manchester United, but same could also be said for someone like Darwin Nunes at Liverpool, who hasn't really had the best experience. He started on the bench against Newcastle. Yes, he came on and scored two goals, but he's been really holding the bench over the likes of Cody Gakpo, Diogo Jota, you know, players like that. Um, so there could be something in that move. But that about wraps it up for today's news video. I'm going to be trying to do as many news videos as I can for the last week of the transfer window, along with doing a video analysing Chelsea's attacking targets. That does include Darwin Nunes. That does include Ryan Cherky, Florian Vert. I will be going over some of the stuff I covered in my earlier video. If you haven't already, make sure you check that out, along with the likes of potentially Jonas Sancho, seeing if he's actually still a good option. If you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below who you would like to see me analyze, who you'd like to see me cover in that video, their strengths, their weaknesses, how well they fit into a Pochettino's side. Let me know. As I said earlier, make sure you check the pinned comment down below to enter the giveaway. I'd like to see as many of you entered as possible. This is a brilliant opportunity. I've got one on display. Just behind me, you can't see it because I've got no camera on. But it really does look pretty cool, even if you're not a Star Wars fan. It's a really cool item just to have on display. I've been The Quick Take, and I will catch you on the next one. See you later.